Hello, so I, how nice is the sun, firstly? I'm going for a few drinks and it was so hot today. I was thinking, oh, what makeup do I do? I don't want it to all just kind of melt off. Is there any point putting anything on my skin? And when I have these kind of questions in my head when I'm getting ready, I always think it's a good idea to do a video because you probably have the same problems as me. So I think I might have solved it. Right, I've moisturised. I am going to do like a minimal going out makeup. Perfect for the sunshine and weather. It's going to take you from that, that well, was it wintry season through to springy summer? I don't know. Um, I've moisturised. I'm going to go in with my redness corrector as I usually do because I hate this redness in my skin. I do use an anti-redness serum. It's the Ren one. That one and it does take it down because you can see it's not as bad as it usually is today uh, i've been using that but i am going to start with a little bit of this green corrector and i'm just going to paint that with my cassie brush over those areas of redness and that's going to enable me to not have to wear such a heavy base because it'll just color correct that for me i don't need loads See, it just kind of smooths it out. I hope you can see. But it does, it just smooths out that colour. Believe it or not, this is not the best light. I do have quite a lot of light, but it's it's not great, is it? I'm going to have to work on that, get my lighting better. Okay, so I've applied my green corrector. Next, I'm going to go with Becca Under Eye. This is the under eye brightening corrector. Becca's actually no more, but they apparently moved this to the um, Smashbox range. Yep, that's it, the Smashbox range. So you can still get it, thank goodness, because I don't know if I could cope without it, I'll be honest. I have decanted some into a little pot for myself because I don't have all my own stuff. So I pinched a bit out of my kit and put it in that little pot. Going in with my hubby brush, a little bit of this corrector. It's really, really soft. It's great for, it's great for a natural makeup, but it's also great for a more mature skin. So if you don't like your concealer sitting under your eye, the feedback on this one is particularly good. I love it, but it's a natural kind of makeup finish. I've gone with the light one today just because I'm quite um, fair skinned at the moment in comparison to what I'm usually like. But they do do a peach one as well and a deeper one, like a more of an orangey one. I think it comes in three shades. But you put this on first and that just corrects the dark. Can you see it's kind of like bouncing light? This just like corrects any darkness and then that might be enough for you, but if you've got areas that you really dislike, you can then go over that with an actual concealer. You can see, if I tip my head like that, you can see it looks a bit of a weird colour, but in the natural like eye to eye, um, you can't see it at all. It's disappeared, it's invisible. So, I could leave that like that, to be honest. Don't really need much more. But I'm not going to. I'm going to go in with a Sizzly Concealer. This is um, an eye concealer. The shade is number two. This is really old. I don't even know if they sell it anymore. But I always pull it out when I want to go for a natural under eye. I'll go in with the same brush. But I'm going to be careful because, because it's a stiff brush, it will put quite a lot of product on. So I'm going to really carefully place it where I want it to go, which they kind of tend to be my dark bits, just here on the top of my cheekbones. And then a little bit on the inner corner, but not much. And then I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go with my sissy brush because this is really, really soft. The great thing about having a soft brush is it's gonna blend it in. Soft brushes are usually blender brushes, and it's not gonna pull the product back off. It's just gonna really soften it into my skin so it's, it becomes like a second skin. Oh, 
I'm only just noticing how much movement is in my eyelids nowadays. Not that I mind. Oh, it's getting really obvious. So I have to pat them back into place. Does anybody else have to do that? When they start to go a bit wrinkly. <laughs> Just pat them back into, into some kind of smooth space. I'm just going to put a little bit of, I'm going to go with a cake concealer. This is Rodeal. I have so many concealers and just cover this blemish here. So just to recap on the concealer situation, because it's a bit of a minefield. We've got the brightening under eye that goes on first. So anything that's brightening or reflective or radiant, put that on or colour correct in to colour correct the darkness. Then we go over with a liquid concealer that's going to neutralise that colour corrector and give you the coverage that you need. So the first one doesn't give you coverage, it just bounces light, so to speak. This one gives you the coverage, but if you have blemishes, you need a cake concealer, so that's something that's flat and stiff, because that's the one that's heavy enough to put over blemishes. You start putting this under your eye, it's creasing everywhere and it's going to look really heavy and sit in any fine lines. So they're the three different concealers in one look and I would suggest that you always have three in your makeup kit, particularly if under eyes are a problem for you, which is the one question that people are always asking. So I wanted to make that clear. Right, I've patted that in. I feel like my skin's kind of like smooth enough now for my liking. It looks all right, but I will put a little bit of color on. Um, I'm going to go with, do you know what? I'm gonna go with my Trini De-Stress Serum because it's lovely. Now I don't want this going everywhere, so I'm gonna use a really big my Helen brush, fluffy brush, and I'm gonna use the tiniest, tiniest amount of product. So I'm gonna put it on the brush and then I'm also almost gonna wipe it back off again so there's pretty much nothing on it. Because the less you put on the skin, the less that can sweat away. If you start overloading it, of course it's gonna move and come off. So I just want a tiny, tiny bit. I mean, I'm normally guilty of like piling on the base, but I'm just patting it over those areas that are a bit uneven. I'll put a bit down my neck. I'll put some on my chest just to even it out, but I've got to be careful because I've got this white top on, so I don't want to get makeup all over it, so I'll just put a bit on. I should probably put a bit of that green corrector on my chest in honesty, you know, just to take the pink and redness down. You know when you see that the skin tone is kind of quite yellow on, on the face and, and pink and red hair. To be honest, I really like using a yellow base, so I'm prepared to get over that. Um, but if it shows too much, it's a bit annoying. But yeah, if you, you have got like quite a lot of redness within your chest, you can take that down with the green corrector as well. Right, so I've barely got anything on my skin really, but it's just finished it off quite nicely for me, so I'm happy with that. Next, I am going to do my brows. I've got this Glossier Boy Brow. Um, it's called, yeah, it's just called Boy Boy Brow. And it's basically, a, sorry, I'm looking in my mirror as I'm doing this. It's basically just a little bit of a brow gel. But you can see it will push them up nicely. And when you're doing a natural look, you've got to pay attention to the detail especially if you're going out in the sunshine because you can see everything in daylight. It's not like when you've got a darkened room and you can get away with stuff. This is like, wow, I can see everything. Including the fact that I need to have my eyebrows done. Hey-ho. Right, I'm going to let that dry for a minute. You can actually press your hairs up like that just to set them into place. If you've got sparse brows, there's a great serum by a brand called Eyebrow Queen, which you'll have heard me talk about. 
and it's great for lash and brow growth. Actually sell it on my website, which is cassielomas.com, but also they sell it on their website. Um, but this is the Brow Pro, my go-to pencil because it's so super, super thin. It's like a little angle, but I love it because you can draw hair strokes. Now, depends how close I am to my mirror as to whether I can actually see what I'm doing. I might use a little hand mirror. Oh, that's not got one in it. That's all. Little being the operative word. Okay. I'm just going to use tiny flicking motions to draw in actual hair strokes. My fingers are quite far down the pen, just so that it's, the pressure is a lot lighter. If it was right up here, I'd probably draw a lot heavier. That's a lot lighter. It does mean you don't have as much control, but that's fine. That's a very natural, nice brow. I like to start on the inside corner, just because I have to fill that bit in. And then I, I kind of leave that section because I've got enough hair, and then I just go to the arch, fill that bit in. But you can fill in any bits where there's no growth. I might have done that a little bit heavy. So I could either rub a bit of that one off or just add a bit more here so oh, I'm gonna just add a little bit more and then maybe also rub a bit off so if you put too much product on your brow just get a brow brush this is my ollie brush one of my faves I just use it all the time and just give them a sweep through and you can see that combination of setting your brow first and then doing those little wispy hairs gives you a really gorgeous natural finish. I've got this Dewy Blush by Ciate. I actually put it on my Instagram the other day. It's so nice. I'm always a bit wary about um, liquid and cream blushes just if I'm going out because I think it's not heavy enough, but it's absolutely perfect for this kind of thing because you don't want it heavy. I've got my Gigi brush and I'm just going to put the brush into the product, suck my cheeks in and let it sink into the contours, the natural hollows of my cheeks. See how lovely that is. Bit much on there. Shall I use it? See how glossy it is and gorgeous. I really love it. Had it for ages as well, not tried it out, but then I used it and I was like, yep, yeah, this is going to be my summer go to. I just like to use my fingers just to like pat around the edges, you know, if you feel like you've not blended it well enough. Now, I would usually put a little bit of blusher over my eyes as well, but because this is glossy, I don't think it's gonna work. It'll just move. So I'm just gonna use what's left on my hands, my lips, just to give them a bit of color. I love that. It always looks so different to me in my mirror than when I look in my camera. Just gonna put a little bit over the top of my nose, just to make it look like I've been in the sun. I've got this gorgeous bronze, uh, it's called Beyond Liquid Highlighter. It's a really dark shade uh, of gold. And I'm gonna use this with my Bowie brush, just to paint a little bit on my eye in the bits that I want to pick up with light. I'm kind of applying it and then dragging it back off with this brush because obviously if it's too heavy because it's a liquid, it will move. But if I just paint the thinnest, thinnest line or layer 
and kind of like drag it off at the same time, it will just settle really nicely into my skin and I will be happy with that. And then I'll, I'll go with, i use my Gigi brush again actually and just use a little bit more of that. And just put it on the top of my cheeks. See? Whenever you're putting highlighter on or anything glossy, you've really got to move your head around so you can see what you're doing and where the lines start and stop. Because otherwise you get outside and it's like, oh, wow, I've not blended that very well. So just try and move about so you can see exactly where it's lying. I'm all about the blush me. I'm never going to change. I could literally just go out with nothing so long as I had a bit of blush on. I'm just using my Helen brush just to pat over it and just really push it into my skin. Then I'm going to use my old trusty mascara, the code Beautiful VLM. I love this because it's got little fibres in it. So it makes your lashes a lot longer and a lot thicker. But also it just doesn't transfer. It doesn't drop down. I mean, I don't have really long eyelashes anyway. But it's so important to me, particularly as I'm a makeup artist, to have makeup without it just going everywhere. Sorry if I'm jabbering on quite a lot. I get carried away with my teaching. Now, I don't always put mascara on my lower lashes um, out of sheer laziness and trying to be quick. But as I'm going out, I will do. But day to day, if I was doing this look like daytime, I probably wouldn't. And also, if it's really hot, that's quite a good tip to just not put lower lash mascara on because then it's not going to transfer in the heat. However, I know this mascara is fantastic and it never transfers for me, so I'll just put a nice little light lick on there. I can take quite a long time doing my mascara, so I always speed it up in the videos. Sorry, just not to bore you. I'm really happy with that. I feel like that's perfect. Um, the only other thing is I am going to spray with, one sec. Here it is. Kate Somerville. And actually, I've been using the Exfoliate Glow Mo Moisturizer as well from the same brand. It's amazing on my skin, this. I love it. Um, but you have to wear SPF with it. So I'm going to use this and just spray over my makeup. Lovely. As you know, I don't really use powder, so I wouldn't set that. But I would just go over my lips with my Dior Glow lip balm you could if you wanted to put a little bit of color on your lip do that but obviously i put the the blush on first and that is it so this is what i would do for my hair's a bit wet sorry this is what i would do for a sunny day going out for a few cocktails Hope you like it. So yeah, I'm off for a couple of margaritas now.